Welcome back guys. Hard to believe, but it's actually been a year since I purchased this shop and started setting it up for my carpentry business. It has been a ton of work and that is part of the reason that you guys have not seen as many YouTube videos over the last year or so. It's just been simply overwhelming a lot of the time, I think. It's been a ton of work, but I have been really busy in here and I've got a lot of cool stuff I wanna show you in this video. Real quick, before we dig into the details, let's do a quick overview of the space itself. So on this side of the shop, we've got 60 feet in depth. This is the heated side and this whole building is divided up into thirds. So I've got cold storage out here and then heated shop space over here. And this is about a third of the entire building. We've got bathroom, office, storage space under that mezzanine, big open area up there. But then this is the general area where I do most of my work. And then the cold storage area is less utilized. Just to give you a rough idea, I know I always like to compare people's shop sizes, but this is the building size that I've got. It's about 136 by 60. And then this would be the heated shop space right here. Um, the shop floor is about 35 feet wide by 60 deep. And then over here on this area, we've got a 12 foot wide uh, storage space with bathroom, office, storage underneath of the mezzanine right here. So it's really actually about the perfect size that I need with my business right now and it's worked out really well. If we come out here to the cold storage space, this is definitely the, sides, the side of the building that I didn't really need too much, um, but it does give me a lot of opportunity to expand in the future if I want to. There's just all kinds of things I can do with this space. I could finish it you know, in the future and expand the shop, um, but I like the options that I have here, but this side is just definitely not nearly as well utilized. Digging into some of the improvements I've made, let's start with material storage first. You'll notice up in that uh, loft area, that whole back wall has wood rack storage on it now, as well as over here above the miter station. As we spin around here on the front side of the shop, you'll notice we've got our plywood storage there. So this rack, over here is a new storage rack for me. I am so glad I built it, it's been awesome. And then the other rack over here is kind of plywood and wood storage. That came back, came here with me from my old shop. This corner of the shop tends to be where a lot of the material that I've got coming in for different projects gets collected. The plywood rack, and then I do tend to just end up leaning a lot of stuff up against the wall right here. I built this plywood rack um, using 12 foot tall studs. They go all the way up through there so that I've got full sheet storage right here. And you'll notice there's space above that so that it's easy to slide those in. Um, and then partial sheet storage up there. Sometimes you end up with a bunch of off cuts and you just need somewhere to put them. And this has worked out great. I went with a melanine bottom so that the sheets slide in and out really easily. Uh, treated lumber there on the bottom as well. I capped off the ends with another sheet of plywood. And then I took the wood storage racks like you would see over there. And I put them across horizontally and that's worked really well to slide um, sheets in on the side as well for storage. Back here around the back side, did the same thing. We've got some wood storage racks on the horizontal plane so that I can store just all kinds of lumber, just somewhere to go with stuff. And then this whole area does still tend to be where I just lean stuff. Eventually I would love to have an overhead garage door right here connecting the two sides of the shops, but it's just not a priority right now. And then this came with me from the old shop and I ended up just putting it right here. Um, makes it a little tight whenever you walk through the door. This is the entry door that I always use, um, but it's, it's worked out pretty well. And it's been, you know, it's allowed me to be manageable with all the stuff that I've got going on. This area up here above the mezzanine was just kind of a useless space almost. Um, the previous owners had built this walk area up here. Um, but I just thought, you know what, this would be really nice to have a lot of lumber storage up here. 
So I went ahead and did that. It's worked out really well. I do also love it because I can walk up here to my uh, dust collector system and access the filter. It's nice to just be able to blow that off. So this little catwalk here works pretty good. This is an Oneida five horsepower dust collector. It's still working out really well. This came with me from the previous shop. Um, all the runs I've got to the miter saw, joiner, planer, table saw work great. Got another trunk line coming across here that's not in use, but I can expand that into other equipment right here. And then we've also got a line going down here that goes all the way across the back of the shop that's worked out great also, and then it ends right there. I'm actually really happy with how this catwalk scenario worked out to mount my dust collector because it allowed me to put this dual drum set up right under here, and it works pretty good for the size of shop that I am. I'm not creating that much sawdust and wood chips, so I don't have to empty it too often. So then continuing on with the theme of lumber storage, this is the rack that I have off to the side of my miter saw. It's just always got a variety of stuff collected on here, but it works, works out really well also. I'm really glad to have it here on the left side. That all brings me to this area of the shop. This is really the central hub of where I do all of my hands-on assembly work. I've made a lot of improvements in this space, but most of my time is spent right here at this workbench. I've got everything set up and designed so that all of my hand tools and things that I need, consumables, are all quickly accessible right from this area right here. The way I've got the shop laid out right now, it's really still designed just around me working in here. I really don't have it set up for multiple guys but this area right here is critical. I built this workbench right before I purchased the shop in anticipation of purchasing the shop. That's my old Polk style workbench that I've had for probably close to 10 years. It's seen better days. Went with a design that I thought would work out pretty well and I've liked this bench so far. I've got a built-in air compressor here that I use. I've got a cord over here and then there's a cord reel that I can access on the other side over there. Storage drawers, shelves. On both ends, I went ahead and added pegboard so that I can hang stuff on the ends. And then this is the side where I've got quick access to all of my most commonly used tools, uh, palm routers, um, different pocket hole screws, staples, sanders, track saws, routers, cordless tools and then on the workbench here all of my common drill bits nails miscellaneous consumables I'm also big on putting labels on things so you can find stuff biscuits sandpaper um, dog hole tools that work you know with the workbench hand tools I actually don't keep much in here anymore because I've got most of my stuff hanging on this back wall and then down here, um, some miscellaneous cordless tools are usually in there. This rolling tool chest right here was awesome for my old shop because it stored a ton of tools, but yet it was still mobile so that I could roll it around if I needed to. I like having this pegboard back on it because I can hang tools on it. Um, but sometimes, especially when I'm like building long beams and stuff, I like to be able to roll it out of the way so having that mobile has been really nice. I keep a lot of miscellaneous stuff on this tool chest, and then it does tend to become a catch-all up here, but sometimes you do just need a place to place things. Um, all kinds of stuff is stored in here. Um, it's just kind of a catch-all again, but uh, the real big improvement has been this back wall right here. Uh, a few months ago, I added pegboard all the way across the back here and on this area as well. And that allowed me to put my most commonly used tools back here. And I have absolutely loved this. Having pegboard on the back side of my assembly area has been really handy. I think it's really nice to be able to visually see the tools that you have out and to vis visually be able to just look and grab the tool that you need rather than having a bunch of stuff piled into drawers. Having the common stuff out here like this has been great. 
And you'll see up here on this top row, I've got my pneumatic nailers, 15, 18, crown stapler, pin nailer, 22 gauge stapler, so that I can easily grab those. And then I do still tend to keep my pneumatic, uh, or not my pneumatic, my cordless nailers, sorry for the poor camera work, over there on the Milwaukee cart because I do still tend to use um, cordless nailers a lot when I'm assembling cabinets. I've got my Milwaukee 18 gauge cordless stapler, 18 gauge brad nailer, and cordless pin nailer over there as well for easy, you know, easy grab and go when I need it. For pegboard storage, I do really enjoy these magnetic strips that you can mount. Um, and it's great for just a lot of different types of tools that you can just stick on there. So I've got my beater chisels and my good chisels on here where I can easily see them and grab them. Screwdrivers up here. I really like these plier racks. Um, these are super handy. They just click right into the pegboard here, but you can store a lot of different pliers on just a really small space with these. Even got a scissors there. So those work really well. Got these handy pegboard cup holders here. Can never have enough utility knives. Face frame clamps, tape, hammers. The most common squares that I use are right here. And then it's always good to have quick access to um, open end wrenches whenever you're doing just random things. Also got a couple levels over here. Happen to have the magnetic ones, so they just click right onto uh, that pipe right there. So this pegboard area has just been awesome. I do still have my uh, Craig pocket hole machine over here. I had this designed and built into this whole wall cabinet before I had my castle pocket hole machine. So uh, I'm still kind of using both. I definitely prefer the castle, but I wish I would have had it built into this whole thing uh, sooner but I haven't really found a great home for that castle machine yet. So it's just kind of mobile right now. The Festool Capex is still working good. Um, it's an ideal solution for the space that I had here just because it takes up a lot less space on the backside than a DeWalt 12 inch sliding saw. One design thing that I really like doing with miter saw stations in the shop is to have a deeper um, cabinet here, my countertop depth here is 27 inches, but then I like to offset this little um, fence back here from my miter saw, and that way you're always setting stuff on your countertop, and with that, with this board here, I know, like, I if I put it back behind this fence, it's out of the way, rather than having it all be, like, open and having stuff migrate to where I might be wanting to cut boards. It just creates a clear line where I know I have to keep things behind. So then my stop block system is on the left side of the miter saw here. It's just the Craig track system. Works pretty good. Um, I've been happy with it. It's a pretty economical solution here. Um, as far as the cabinetry on the miter saw station, when I bought this shop, um, I was thinking, man, I am gonna build just some awesome shop cabinets to have storage and stuff. And so I built this whole miter saw station wall with these base cabinets. And I was even thinking of doing wall cabinets too. But here's the thing I learned. Whenever I upgraded to such a larger shop space, I no longer needed as much shop cabinetry because I have a large storage room. So I don't really need to put stuff in cabinets that much. So this whole wall of cabinetry I bet I'm only using maybe 25% of it. Um, a lot of the drawers just do not even have anything in it because I just actually haven't needed the space. So that's a, something a little bit different. Um, once you get a larger space, those shop cabinets aren't as important. Whereas with my old garage shop, they were critical to staying organized because I was just so much more limited in storage space. One thing I have done is the area, again, behind my primary working area. I do utilize these drawers a little bit more for my commonly used stuff. I've got my iron on edge banding stuff in a drawer like that. 
I've got another drawer over here that has a lot of different um, drill bits and stuff like that that I commonly use. So it is nice. I just have found that I don't utilize these cabinets nearly as much as I thought I would. Another key area where I've made some pretty nice improvements has been to my table saw setup. So this is a saw stop, five horsepower industrial table saw. Brought it over from the old shop. I love the saw. Um, it's got this sliding table on it. I'm not a huge fan of it. I never use it with the fence that comes with it, but it does help feed materials through. With the table saw, there are a lot of different accessories that you're gonna use with it. So one of the new improvements that I made to this table saw setup was this cabinet right here that goes underneath my, uh, my side table. So this is on wheels. I can move it around if I want to, but for the most part, it stays stationary. Um, I've got blade storage over here, it pulls out up top standard table saw accessories, um, my dado stack cartridge, push sticks, some different gauges, um, use this a ton, and uh, calipers, more good stuff, more good stuff, and then not much in there. And then I also have a little side table area here for my Incra jigs. I don't actually use these a ton, but it is good to have a nice storage area for those on the side of the saw. This cabinet has been super nice. I wish I could remember, I actually purchased these plans from another YouTube creator. Um, I saw he made this cabinet and it's like the first time I ever purchased plans for anything, but I just copied what he did, but I, for the life of me, cannot remember who it was at this point. Um, so sorry about that, whoever made this, but I did copy somebody else with the design. I had already had that clamp rack from the previous shop and this outfeed table was also from the previous shop as well. However, I did make a new top on it. This is melamine and I find material slides on this way, way better. If you've been watching very much, um, I'm using this power feeder a ton these days. And with that power feeder, having a slick surface on the back here helps just feed material through a lot better. Another key improvement, you'll see that extension cord lit up down there. That actually travels all the way around here, up my dust collection pipes, and I've got it plugged into the outlet there by my overhead garage door opener. That plug is what I use whenever I use the power feeder. And it's really nice to just be able to plug that in right there and not have to pull a cord off the wall to use the power feeder. Other than that, not too many improvements have been made to this area. This is the primary milling area of the shop, joiner, planer, table saw, and it all goes up into this trunk right here and back to the dust collector. It's worked out really well. I um, also had my power sub panel routed over there got some outlets for all that stuff you will notice here something i never knew about previously but these are horse stall mats and they are really nice for reducing fatigue on your feet they're great to stand on um, i've been really happy with those they're relatively affordable so i've got four of those here and then two of them behind uh, where i'm usually standing putting stuff together over there been really happy with that. You will notice there is some moisture over here. Unfortunately, my garage door leaks and I get water that comes across here and goes into a floor drain right there. And that's been a real nuisance because it just gets wet under here. So I gotta figure out how to fix that at some point. Let's talk a little bit about this wall of the shop over here. I didn't clean anything up before making this video. This is pretty typical of how it looks most of the time. The entry door where I'm always coming into the shop is right there. We've got a couple cord reels and then the previous owners already had this sink set up, um, hose right there. And then I added some just organization for brooms, dust pans, stuff like that. Got broom storage right there as well as behind that stuff over there. It's good to have brooms easily accessible. But then the previous owners had this workbench right here. And um, I find that it just mostly gets used as a catch-all at this point. 
I haven't really needed this wall space for equipment. So it's just, um, it's just kind of a big old long handy workbench. You'll see this area here, uh, lots of battery stuff going on. Cordless tools tend to collect here. I've got my chargers all set up. A lot of chargers here. Um, I love the DeWalt four port charger. These little dual chargers from Milwaukee are great. You can charge 18 and 12 volt batteries. Um, got some other stuff here, dual chargers. This is a new one from Milwaukee. They just sent out and it is an absolute beast. It's got these new um, Forge batteries, 12.0s, and it, uh, it'll charge those puppies up fast. So really loving that as well. For now, I'm planning on just leaving this wall as is. If I was to grow a little bit and expand in the future, I could put an edge bander or different equipment on this wall or create another similar workstation as I have on the opposite side that I use if I had another guy working in here more often. I mentioned previously how I don't really need all of that cabinet storage at this point, and part of that is because of this storage room that I have here. This has still been working out um, amazing. We keep all of our commonly used fasteners stocked in here so that whenever we complete large jobs, we'll come in and just restock the work vehicles. And then also just having a lot of different stuff on hand so that I'm not making trips to the hardware store to get things done has been uh, just awesome as well. So everything's pretty labeled, um, easy to find stuff but this space has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, another little improvement here that's been great, you'll see this blade storage. These are just little file folder, folder things that I got off Amazon that cost next to nothing, but they're great to be able to just slide your blades in here. Um, I keep my boxes for my blades so that I can send them in to be sharpened again but that's been a really cool little improvement to keep blades organized. Now it's time to take a look at the least productive but most awesome portion of the shop. This is one of my favorite improvements that I've been able to do in this space. You will notice back here, this area doesn't really fit in very well. This is not woodworking equipment. So uh, I've got my Net Return Pro SkyTrack launch monitor for hitting golf balls. And then I just bring my laptop out of the office, plug it into my lodge monitor and use it to, uh, to play golf in here and do little practice range sessions. And it's been fantastic. Uh, got the golf set up back here, miscellaneous clubs and all that good stuff. But uh, I love coming in here, hitting some balls occasionally. Not great for productivity, but uh, good for the golf game. Got the little Milwaukee fan set up there so we don't get too hot hitting balls, but uh, this has been a really uh, fun thing to have space for in the shop at this point. So someday we've got this big old cold storage space and this little wing of the cold storage over here would be perfect to set up with a launch monitor and finish this all out. So that's maybe a dream for someday, but it'd be awesome to have a full-blown simulator room on the back side of this someday. Now the bad thing with purchasing a shop that was 25 years old is there, it's just a little bit older and there were some things that needed renovated. And this area right here is under my mezzanine and I just got done doing a massive renovation in here. It was just nasty. It had cabinets that were probably already reused, 40 years old, full of mouse crap and everything else. Ripped all those out put new cabinetry in here, got myself a fridge, which is absolutely amazing. Um, being able to have some cold beverages in here is, is great. And then if I do have guys working in here at any point, we've got a nice break area where you can sit down and have lunch. Got the microwave, um, sink, everything we need in here. So I'm super happy with this space. It had glued down linoleum on this floor and man, that was a job getting that off. But managed to get it all off, stripped, put concrete sealer on here. So we've just got concrete on the floor now, which will be easy to clean up. I kept all the doors and everything. 
And then same thing in the bathroom here, ripped out all that old linoleum, um, painted the walls, rubber base. So it's looking a lot better in the bathroom here. And then I'm super excited about this over here. This is my new office space. So renovated this as well, put myself a desk in here, just um, kind of your cheap put together desk. And it works pretty well in this space. Got printer, um, I got internet, satellite internet hooked up out here. And then this is my Microsoft Surface laptop that I use to take onto the job sites to draw things up. That also is what I use with my golf simulator. So I can just plug this into my dock right here. And it's a monitor here. And then it also uses the monitor on the laptop. So that works extremely well got a couple the previous owner actually had tvs in here um, so it's cool to watch golf while i'm working sometimes but also want to do some sound dampening material on this back wall here for any time i'm doing podcasts and stuff like that and part of the other motivation for finishing off this space is i want to create business focused content for trade businesses and um, a lot of that will probably be done right here. So probably add more sound stuff here. The curtains were a sound deadening idea as well. That's also why I also have a rug in here, just trying to take the echo out of this room. But this has just been a, a really fun space to have just to come in and be able to uh, think and work in a quiet space, which home always isn't with a couple kids, but um, very, very, very nice space in here. So that pretty much wraps up the shop update. If there's anything else you guys wanna see in particular, let me know. One other really important part of this shop update um, that a lot of people probably wonder about is the financial side of a shop. So I am excited to say that the shop is paid for. Um, we were able to get this paid for really quickly. Um, I had most of the money for it on hand whenever it came up for sale and I didn't have to take any money out of um, our retirement savings to, to basically purchase this. Um, so we were able to do that. I'm super glad that I don't have the financial burden of making a payment on this shop. It did increase my business overhead a little bit. You know, you've got property taxes, the electric bill, which is less than a hundred bucks a month. I've got an internet bill now, um, just some things like that, but it has um, just allowed me to take the business to the next level and given me a lot more options to expand in the future if I want to do that. And then obviously the one of probably the bigger motivation for purchasing this property was actually to have a building lot because this property is on four acres. Um, I've got my shop here and then we can build a house in the future if we choose to do that. So that was a big part of the motivation for this particular property. But I know a lot of guys see all this who are similar small operations to me. Um, and you don't want to jump into something like this if it doesn't make sense financially. With where I was at in business and in the content creation side of the business, um, we were able to do this without it being a financial strain but you do really have to be careful purchasing a property like this or going into a rent or lease agreement on a large property because it can weigh you down a lot in your overhead if you aren't prepared for it. I think a lot of guys starting out see something like this and what they don't see is all the years of sacrifice and building up a business and saving and working out of our attached garage that led to this point. Um, you don't get to this point by being um, making bad financial decisions. You get to this point by being frugal and strategic and making, making good decisions. And frankly, there's some days that I still don't love having this large of a property, but uh, we really thought it through and um, felt that it made sense for us and um, walked forward in that and thankfully, like I said, it's paid for and we don't have that, that uh, monthly burden with it, but you still have to look at your ROI in the future. 
And uh, it takes a lot of work to get the ROI back on such a large property purchase like this, but I think it'll be a good thing for us. It's been great. Um, let me know if you got more questions, whatever, but just wanted to give you guys an update, getting back into the YouTube thing here, trying to get some more content out. You'll see some more videos here in the shop coming your way in the future, but thanks for watching as always. Hit that like button, subscribe, drop a comment, ask a question, whatever. It helps the algorithm and I do read the comments. Appreciate you guys and we'll see you on the next, <coughs> we'll see you on the next one.